Have you ever made a garment that fits you perfectly? As in everywhere. Bust, waist, hips, sleeves, everywhere. Well, if you want to find out more about this beautiful thing, keep watching. And welcome to Killer Kitsch Lizzie, my weird little world where I like to knit and sew, do other crafty things, and go on about how beautiful <laughs> this blouse ended up being for me. So this is the Maxine blouse. It is from Subversive Femme. It is a PDF download on her website and her Etsy shop. Um, she made one a few months back and as soon as I saw it, I went, I have to make this blouse. It had all of the elements that I love in blouses. Um, one being this nice big collar. It came in a sleeveless option and, um, it looked spectacular on her. So we're both curvy girls and I thought if it looks good on her, it's definitely going to look good on me. So I downloaded the PDF and I'm really happy I bought it. So just a few things about the Maxine. It, I'm going to pop up a photo of the pattern cover. It comes in three different collars. Um, this one, a standing collar and then a, a shorter curved collar. There's a nice little scallop at the front. And there is a sleeveless option and then a short sleeved option. And then there's two bodices. Um, this bodice has um, two front darts, you know, waist dart, bust dart, waist dart at the back. And the second bodice option has two tucks at the front. I can't remember if they're at the back or not. Um, I'll note it over on Patreon whether or not there's two tucks. And um, <laughs> I knew, like I knew when I made it, I'm going to have to grade up from 38 to 42 bust. And grading up was super easy. I also compared it to a second, another garment, like shirt garment, the smooth sailing. I'll mention that in, you're going to see clips coming up where I'm going to mention it. But I knew I had to um, curve out from the waist to deal with this and my butt. <laughs> um, so I compared that to the pattern and I made those adjustments too. And once I made those adjustments, I did a wall and immediately it fit me beautifully. So I am going to, following this, I'm going to show you some clips of the sort of the stages I went through to get to the final um, blouse as well as gonna be a short little video and photos of me wearing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely in love with this blouse. And I already have plans to do a short sleeve version. I want to do different colors, the different colors. And um, I also want to do a, uh, I'm going to draft a long sleeve version of the uh, sleeve. But yeah, going forward, I'm going to be using this as my, sort of like my shirt block. Also, and I missed Shirtwaist September, unfortunately. I just was too much stuff going on. Um, I definitely want to make this into a shirtwaist dress. Shirtwaist dress. Say that three times fast because it would be super easy for me to um, do. Like I would just have to like, you know, um, shorten the bodice to my waist and then put a full skirt with a button panel down the front, right? Or not, I could just um, end the buttons here. Oh, that was the other thing, speaking of buttons, the other thing, um, the pattern called for four buttons. I actually ended up doing five uh, just because I felt like I wanted um, button down here as well and because sometimes I want to wear it untucked right so I just um wasn't opening up at all on me it's just I felt I feel more secure with a button there um but next time I'm gonna get uh some statement buttons or do covered buttons but let me just grab two fabrics and I'm gonna show you 
um, possibly two more of these blouses. So um, a little while ago, I won a prize from Tardayton. I named a dress. <laughs> um, and uh, she sent me these two absolutely stunning fabrics. They are both florals, and if you uh, have, you might have seen over on my um, Instagram, I did a little, I did a reel, a little uh, reel about the uh, the prize pack. There's also buttons that will match this. Um, I forgot to bring them. Sorry. So there's buttons to go with these fabrics, and I know you know we're creeping into fall here, but I don't care. I still use whatever fabrics I want. <laughs> And then when the weather gets colder, I throw a cardigan over it. I don't care if it looks like it's a spring print or a summer print or whatever. But so this one has, I'll do close-up photos actually um, and put them up. But this has uh, two different color um, flowers on it with a white background, which, and it's a, this, ugh, it's beautiful. And this was more drapey. And again, it has, you know, a bunch of flowers on it, two different uh, shades of pink. So these are going to become Maxine blouses. Now, I would like to actually put sleeves on maybe this one. I don't, we'll see how much fabric's there. Um, I also had orange because I wanted to do a, a Halloween blouse. Um... But there's not enough of the fabric. I thought there would be. Oh, and also there's a stain on it. I don't know where that stain came from. <laughs> and it's not coming out. So it's like an oil stain. I don't have no idea where it came from. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going fabric shopping. Um, because I need a couple of, well not fabric shopping. But I need a few things from the fabric store. Uh, Notion. So I'm going to see if I can get myself a couple of yards of Halloween fabric. So I can do a Halloween blouse, because I think that would be nice. That'd be fun. And this is a really quick sew too. So the pattern also has the vintage instructions in the pattern um, PDF. Uh, but Bex, who's amazing, absolutely amazing, does add up like notes um, throughout the, the pattern. So helpful, very helpful notes. So yes, I highly recommend you get this pattern. So without further ado, Let's move on to me going through the stages of getting to this. Well, hello. So I have been working on the Maxine blouse. It is from Subversa Femme. The initial pattern is for a 38 bust. I am a 42 bust. So I had to do some grading up and I'm doing the third option on the bottom there with the collar, but I'm doing it sleeveless. So this is the finished 12. Uh, there is no collar on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, because I didn't really need to do the collar. I did do the arm um, facings just to make sure that the armholes weren't going to be too tight. Uh, this has um, darts, waist darts at the front and the back and two bust darts. The neckline... Um, opens up till about here. And the original pattern calls for four buttons, um, two inches apart. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do four or, I might do five. Um, it is meant to be tucked in. Um, however, I think I want maybe one or two more buttons. I might even do six buttons, we'll see. Cause it fits me around my, on my tummy and my, my hips, right? Or high hip. But I'm very, very happy with the fit of this. Very pleased. Okay, so the next uh, little bit you're gonna see is um, I'm gonna like I'm starting to sew the uh, the blouse. So you'll next bit I'll I don't know where I am with the blouse. And then back. Okay, so unfortunately the color's not coming out exactly how it is. It's this really dark teal. It's beautiful. It looks royal <laughs> in the video. I don't know, blues and reds, I cannot get them to film on this phone. But anyway, so everything is done with the exception of the buttonholes. And um, 
there is a raw edge at the bottom of the collar that I need to put some bias binding and I need to just tack down the um, facings for the sleeves. Everything else is done. It's been hemmed. It needs a really good iron though um, because uh, cotton <laughs> wriggles very easily. So I'm not going to give it a good iron until I uh, finish all the hand stitching. So in the um, actual instructions it says to do um, bound buttons but I'm not going to do that uh, I have marked underneath um, positioning for five buttonholes I'm going to do the five and then uh, put it on and see if I want like a sixth one at the bottom towards the bottom anyway so there's a couple things that are not in the actual instructions that I did um, was there a couple one maybe one I can't remember what I did was um, to help the facing stay in place, I stitched in the ditch uh, at the seams, the bottom and the top seam, and the armholes. And um, what else? Oh, there was something else. It was just the way that the uh, the facing was put in. I actually, you know, folded it under, sewed, and then folded it out like you would a collar. Yeah, again, it's very wrinkled. I need to just give it a good press. But um, otherwise, I'm very, very happy with this. Um, oh, that was the other thing. I actually did a, um, looking back at the toile, I forgot to mention, I think I want to do a collarless version of this as well. And to do that, I would just um, probably do a back facing. I mean, I could like just, you know, fold under um, the back part because it's going to get folded under anyway when you're doing the uh, the facing, the button band facing. And like hand stitch it, hand stitch it down with some bias binding maybe. That, that is a possibility. But I might also uh, self-draft a facing for the back. I think that with the sleeveless option for this blouse would be super cute. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So the next time you see this blouse, it will be 100% done with the buttonholes and everything and um, properly ironed. <laughs> and um, you might see a version on Bunty here, but I am going to attempt to make sure there is uh, some footage of me at the end of this video, like at the end after this, of me wearing this, maybe with my trousers. Anyways. Really happy with this, and I will be doing a sleeveless version, and I'll probably extend and do a long sleeve version of this, just because I really love the fit of it. Okay, here is the finished Maxine. Again, the color's not showing up properly, but um, I am super happy with this. There's a couple of things I did, um, changes I made. So, as I mentioned, I had to grade it up because it was a 38, I'm a 42. So I did that. And before I graded it up, what I did was I compared the pattern pieces from this with a previous similar-ish top that I've made, the smooth sailing blouse from Wearing History. And by comparing the two, I knew what parts of the the garment needed to be graded up. Mostly it was around the belly and hips area. This is the sleeveless version. And so what I did was instead of, it calls for four buttons and I could have done four large buttons, but I just, cause, and well, and the reason I did five, um, the four kind of ended around here somewhere, which meant a lot of this was open and I didn't really like that because if I'm going to wear it outside of a garment, now I realize it's meant to be tucked in, but sometimes in the summer you want to just like, you know, have it untucked. <laughs> and because of that, I did decide to put a fifth button. Um, and the buttons I chose were pretty cute. Got some like marbling in them. I don't know if you can see that there. 
Oh, I just noticed I got to trim. Um, there's some a few little cleanup I realize I have to do. Like I have to do a little bit of trimming around the buttonholes. Um, I still have to remove the basting from the collar. A little bit of it's showing. I just, I'm just removing what's showing. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. It fits me perfectly. Oh, and on the inside, just to clean up, I'm not going to open it up and show you, but just to clean up around the collar, I put uh, some bias tape. I hate any kind of like rough looking collar stitches. I know you can serge it to clean it up and stuff like that, but I just, it looks a little messy to me in my mind. I don't mind if the rest of it's surged, um, but around the collar area, I just want to you know, put bias binding on it to make it look nicer. I love the collar, how big it is. Oh, that was one issue I had. That was user error. It had nothing to do with the pattern or the um, instructions. This was supposed to, as you can see, there's a bit of a bit sticking out here. The collar was supposed to meet, like be clean here. I think I just um, might have cut the collar piece ever so slightly too short. Because <laughs> um, in my mind, I was thinking, I had to remember to do something. I can't, I, anyways. And I think it comes down to when I was tracing out the collar piece. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, long story short, I messed up. It has nothing to do with the pattern. But who cares? It doesn't matter. No one's going to be like, oh my goodness, this was supposed to match up. Nobody's going to know. Well, I mean, anyone watching this video will know what. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> so I will be making this again. This is now going to be sort of like a base shirt bodice for me. Um, I went through my stash quickly. I had an orange fabric, but it's not gonna be enough. I want to do like a Halloween kind of shirt with it, um, with sleeves. This pattern does come with short sleeves and yeah, I don't have enough. And then I found another fabric, which I love. But it turns out I already made a smooth sailing blouse with it, so there's no point making two. And then I do have one more fabric, which is a gray with these beautiful yellow flowers on it. You've seen me wearing the dress. I'm gonna find it and see if there's enough there, because I would like to make a shirt with that. But worst case scenario, what I'm gonna do is probably have to buy some Halloween fabric, because <laughs> I do want to make a blouse for Halloween with sleeves. Okay, so the next video you're gonna see is me actually wearing a vaccine. Bunty with this beautiful blouse. I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough of how I got to the end result. Oh, I always forget. I'm wearing my Haslam sundress and uh, the self-drafted with the, the cuff detail. Um, and this aqua, I guess it's aqua. I keep calling it turquoise. I think it's more of an aqua blue. Anyway, um, it's tiered. So I will link this uh, dress up uh, somewhere, um, probably in the below or in the doc over on Patreon. By the way, please join Patreon. It's free. I um, do blog posts over there um, with much more detail about, you know, added detail from what I'm saying here, as well as if there's ever a PDF or some sort of um, attachment that needs to go with a video, it's over there. Unfortunately, YouTube, you can't attach anything. So <laughs> you can put links, but you can't attach anything. So go give me a follow. It's free. Um, yes, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please, you know, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Be kind, though. <laughs> I do not tolerate cruel comments. So please be kind and uh, yeah, subscribe, please. I would love it if you subscribed 
hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos because I got a whole bunch of really fun Halloween content coming up. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Anyway, so yeah. Go get yourself a Maxine pattern and make yourself this blouse. I'm telling you, I have never been so happy with any garment I have ever made to this date. I have gotten things to fit me, you know, after a lot of work. I mean, backing up, that's kind of a bit of a lie. I love these sundresses that I made uh, with the Haslam pattern, um, but it did take some tweaking to get them to fit me really well. This one twall done fits beautifully. I'm going to make a bunch more because I absolutely love it. And you should too. So until next time, stay kitschy. Thank you.